This is America's number one financial news program, On the Money. Now, Maria Bartiromo. Up next, On the Money, the patient prescription for the rollout of Obamacare. What the reform means for you, your doctor's appointments, and your medical bills. The big story of this October, the other big story, the Affordable Care Act exchanges are finally here. Starting in 2014, millions of the newly insured Americans will flood the health care system. Is the industry ready or are hiccups to follow? Joining me right now is Dr. Kenneth L. Davis, Mount Sinai Health System CEO, and Cyrus Masumi, CEO and founder of the medical care booking site, ZocDoc. Good to have you on the program, gentlemen. Good to be here. Good to see you. So let's talk first about the impact. How does the Affordable Care Act and the 32 million New patients joining the healthcare system affect your respective businesses. Dr. Davis, you first. Well, right now those 32 million haven't signed up yet. The question is how many will and will it really change what we do? The macroeconomic effects though in healthcare are so overwhelming that it really doesn't matter whether we had the exchanges or whether we didn't have the exchanges. What matters is the governments, state and federal can't afford health care and employers can't afford the benefit packages. So we have to become more efficient no matter what happens. So what, what impact have you seen so far? Well, there are few, fewer admissions, there are fewer, less uses of the emergency room, and care has to simply be more efficient and of higher quality. Mm -hmm. Cyrus, what about you? Well, uh, with 32 million new patients and no new doctors, uh, we're about to have a huge access problem in this country. Even in advance of health care reform, we have retiring baby boomer doctors, baby boomers who need more health access to health care. And with these 32 million people, it's a perfect storm as it relates to access. So if you look at Massachusetts, which has had health care reform similar to what we're seeing since 2006, there's, there's, there, there, there are wait times to see a doctor spiked from 20 days on average to 60 days. Boston's got among the worst times to see a doctor, and still on ZocDoc you can find a doctor same day in Boston. So what we believe is, is that we're about to have a huge access problem. So Cyrus is right. I mean, it's estimated that we will be short 90,000 doctors by 2020. Um, why aren't there enough doctors? Dr. Huge Davis? problem. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the training programs that are necessary to produce enough doctors. We're increasing the number of slots in medical schools, but there has been a freeze on residency positions in the United States for much more than a decade. And that bottleneck is really hurting us. Well, you, go ahead, you know, the one thing that's interesting is if you look at, um, obviously it takes 35 years to create a doctor. So that's a, sort of a, a long lead time. I know, I know Mount Sinai has been thinking about it for, for years, about access being one of your guys' uh, pillars to how you, how, you think about, uh, how you think about the world. But it's interesting to think about how technology can help solve this access problem. Because if it takes 35 years to create a doctor, how do we solve this? And that's where we feel... Um, uh, companies like ZocDoc can help because what we're effectively doing is we're scanning all these doctors at open appointment times. If someone has a last minute cancellation, which happens 10 to 20 percent of the time, we can feed that time with a, with a, with a, with a, a patient appointment. So we call this the hidden supply of health care. So Dr. Davis, Mount Sinai recently completed a partnership uh, with Continuum, making it the largest nonprofit hospital system in New York City. 3,500 yes. beds. Talk to us about that. We're seeing other hospitals as well, well partner up across the country or out and out merge. Right. Is this the trend due to economics or is this Obamacare? This is due to economics. Size and scale bring better quality and efficiency. And that's what we see in our system. And to get back to what Cyrus was saying, in our system now, we have some 6,000 doctors. 2,500 of them are employed. We're rapidly moving toward a system on an electronic platform where we can give people same-day appointments because we can identify who's got time and slot them right in. That's that doesn't happen if you're a small system. Right, so the network is actually enabling a, a lot more of that. Do you think the Affordable Care Act will reach its goal in terms of providing access to quality, affordable health care? Cyrus, what do you think? People don't know how many folks will sign up for these plans. But if you look at what happened on October 1st in terms of the demand, like 4.7 million people going to the healthcare.gov government exchange, a federal government exchange alone, it's pretty clear that there's bent up demand. And it's pretty clear people will sign up for these plans. So ultimately, we are gonna improve access to healthcare. I think that is, that is an inevitable. How big it, it will be uh, remains to be seen. And so we'll, we'll, we'll wait for January 1st to see, uh, see how big it gets. What do you, you know, if Massachusetts is an example, this will succeed. The question that I have is what plans will people buy and do they understand the consequences of the plans they do buy? Some of them have very high copays, very high deductibles, and it may actually inhibit them from using the care that they think they have. Mm, that's in an interesting point. Now, Mount Sinai is a client of ZocDoc. 
Yes. Right. So, and you mentioned a moment ago the networks. I mean, you, you're, you've got to see startups like this actually improve um, access, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, when do you think we see the results of this? When are you going to start getting an idea in terms of whether people understand the quality? Are they, right. you know, not? going to the doctor because it's too expensive? If the metric is how many sign up, we'll know in a year. If the metric is how many people are actually accessing care, improving quality, it'll take a few years to get that answer. Do you think the technology is changing your business the way Absolutely. It's, I mean, Cyrus is obviously an a Electronic health records are revolutionizing medicine. Yeah. Um, no, I, I like the electronic record story, but there's also something, I mean, like a company like Qualcomm, which of course has benefited from making the chips in our, in our mobile devices, the cell phones that we all use. They're backing a clinical trial right now, whereas you can insert a sensor into your bloodstream. That's right. And it will tell you, you've got to go to the doctor, you're going to have a heart attack in two weeks. Well. I mean, this is pretty extraordinary, what's happening with sensors. There are amazing applications that are being developed now, like the one you discussed, that have the, chan the possibility of revolutionizing how we can give care from a distance. We're going to have to see whether those are as efficacious as we hope they'll be. All right, I love it. The technology is really changing things. Gentlemen, good to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kenneth Davis, Cyrus Masumi. It's up next on The Money.